Hey, hey YouTube, what is up? It's been a little while since I posted a Monarch deck profile. And to be honest, I'm kind of known for my Monarch deck, at least at my locals I am, because I pretty much never give up on this deck. And I've been sneaking my way around the YouTube, looking at other people's decks, seeing how the deck is faring in the Zodiac heavy format. And I've seen some fucking crazy shit. I saw a guy who posted a video a month ago thinking he literally invented the Thestalos into Erebus combo. He said he'd never seen anyone do it before. So uh, I'm here to set the record straight. I'm not trying to mislead you or anything like this, but my Monarch deck is pretty much as consistent as I can get at this format, so I feel like it's finally time to show you how I play my Monarchs in this Zodiac heavy format. Alright, so to get this party started, I play 3 Edia. You need as many of the small vassals as possible, and I don't think I need to explain what all the small vassals do, but I will, I guess, explain why I play the numbers that I do. I also play 3 Edios. Now, some people do play 2 of this. I like it at 3 because if you open Edia turn 1, you're pretty much guaranteeing that for the next 2 to 3 turns, you're getting 2 tribute summons per turn because Edios banishes itself in the graveyard, special summon Edia, which special summons Edios, and you repeat that till you run out of Edioses, and then when you do that, you start to go into your Mithras. So Edios opens you up, it allows you to play longer and harder than you normally would be able to with Monarchs, 2 tribute summons per turn, and this deck is fucking dirty, and usually games don't last 4 to 5 turns because by then you'll probably run out of resources regardless. And lastly, I play 3 Mithra because it is the spiciest card to open in tandem with Vanity's Fiend and Return of the Monarchs. It's pretty nuts what you can pull off. Routinely in this deck, I get Vanity's Majesties and a March on Field, and that's just fucking stupid. And the reason that I'm able to pull this off is because Majesties has Monarch stats, so you could use it with Tenacity. You can search it off return. There's a bunch of crazy shit that this card lets you do. And the fact that it special summons itself, and then when it's tributed, gives you another tribute summon is just ridiculous. And as for the big boys that I play, I play 3 Erebus because it is non-targeting removal from field, hand, and grave. That is ridiculous. If you open this up turn 1 in tandem with Thestalos, like I mentioned in the intro, you can rip 2, which is fucking dirty. You also get to see your opponent's entire hand and kickstart your engine, which is nuts. This card just lets you do way too much, and I honestly think that this should have been hit over Aether. One Aether does not matter because Stormforth is at 1, so you would have only been able to pull off one Aether convincingly once per turn so it as soon as they limited stormforth i think they should have limited this instead of aether because the deck is still way too strong with three erebus i then play three karaz because we lost a lot with having aether hit to one we lost a lot of consistency because we couldn't activate tenacity as much so we had to bump up karaz to make up for the lost cards in the deck when we had three aether you normally ran two karaz but now you have to bump it up to three because basically we rely on karaz's ability to pop our own monsters to dig deeper into our deck i really love to open this card in tandem with return of the monarchs because not only do you get a free search but then karaz's effect triggers once return resolves you pop the return and you get another draw we still have pantheism at one and it's easier to access more than ever thanks to some new cards but i really do love the Karaz at three i still would not run it at any less than that next up i play the one thestalos i find that i actually side this card out a lot so i might consider removing it eventually but for now it is just too dirty to see your opponent's entire hand see what their entire plan is and then make them discard one and they lose life points if it's a monster so that's that's just the icing on the cake and for the last of the actual monarchs, I play the one Aether because tribute summoning is fucking broken and tribute summoning on your opponent's turn is even more broken. And what's more broken than that is tributing their monster for it, then bring out Karaz and popping their whole fucking board. It's just this card lets you do way too much. I understand why it's at one, but I still think that Erebus is the stronger of the two. But hey, I'll still take the ability to tribute on my opponent's turn for fucking free. And now for the big boys, which are more relevant than ever this format, I play two Vanities Fiend because locking your opponent out of special summoning is what needs to happen this format. You can't let Zoo get their combo off because they gain too much advantage and they get too much back row. So Vanities Fiend helps with that and his brother Majesty's Fiend is also pretty spicy at that as well. It stops them from doing anything. It stops their monsters from getting effects. You have Majesty's Fiend. They can special summon all the Zodiacs they want, but they can't pop your monster. So none of it fucking matters. Matters. I really like this card because it's searchable. I've actually bumped Vanity's Fiend down to two because I feel like Majesty's is just so much dirtier to pull off against Zodiacs and it really does hurt other decks as well. Now I think it's time for some spells. I play three Return of the Monarchs. This card is ridiculous in tandem with Karaz. 
does. It's pretty much just ridiculous in this deck. If you could pull this card off, you automatically go plus one for nothing but tribute summoning, and then you just get to style on your opponent for even further with whatever card you draw. Especially if you have two tribute summons, you tribute summon whatever garbage is in your hand, and then search out the card you really want and slap it on top. You just get so much shit off, it's ridiculous. Three return, I would never run any less than that until I'm forced to because return, you know, eventually may get hit because monarchs are still a threat and link format is coming up and this deck is still fucking dirty in links. So I really like return at three. Then I play three domain, which is pretty much what allows you to shut down any other deck besides fucking Infernoids. I really do like Domain at three. You can't deny that it's the fucking best card. If you open up something like Vanity's Fiend, obviously Domain's not even necessary, so you could ditch you with Pantheism. But if you open any other Monarch, you can use the Domain to lock your opponent out of their extra deck unless they control a tribute summon monster. And I'll fucking love to see the day when Zodiac Tribute summons. So this card is fucking broken. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I run it at three until it gets hit like it got hit in Japan. Then I play three Tenacity because it lets you search out any card you want in this deck. And that is ridiculous. It's pretty much your way to get to Pantheism because Pantheism is now at one. It's your way to get to Domain. It's any card you want it to be. And that is crazy. If you have a Vanity's Fiend in hand and you have a return and you can't activate Tenacities, you just tribute some of the Vanity's Fiend and then you get a Majesty's to go next to it. You could search March at that point, put it down, and then you have Vanity's Majesty's March. And your opponent can't do shit. They can't special, they can't activate monster effects, and they can't pop the fucking cards because they can't be targeted or destroyed, which is just ridiculous. Tenacity just lets you get to whatever part of your deck you need at the time you need it and the fact that this is searchable itself by pantheism and you could force it because you just reveal three tenacity is nuts and now since last time i've actually bumped up march of the monarchs to two because i feel like two march is just too dirty i've seen a lot of zodiac players playing stuff like cosmic cyclone heck i even play cosmic cyclone and it does stop me sometimes but you know if one cosmic cyclone will stop me i doubt they'll have two so usually i'll just open and set double march with my vanity's fiend and then they can't get over it they can't do shit i've actually pulled it off against an infernoid player and they scooped as soon as they saw the second march come down they could handle one but they couldn't handle two and march is just nuts and sometimes you know if you use one and you go through it it's harder to recycle if your opponent gets it out of your graveyard infernoids can banish a shit ton so that's really tough but having a second one that's searchable thanks to cards like tenacity and it's pretty easy to force if you do something like march march stormforth with a pantheism being banished your opponent doesn't want to lose their monster so they'll most likely give you this card because they have to give you one so i'll take march any day of the week and next up for the one ofs that i play I play one Frost Blast because this card, in one turn, if you have an Edia on the field that you can send to the graveyard, can pop four back row. That gets rid of Paleozoics, it gets rid of any Zodiac problems you're gonna have, it gets rid of any back row problems you'll ever have in your life. This card is stupid. I mean, obviously they can chain, but you know, in this format, if they chain D barrier my monarchs, I'll fucking laugh my ass off. So this just gets rid of so much and stops them from doing pretty much anything to stop me. I play one Stormforth because it is unfortunately at one. When this was at three and Aether was at three, this deck was ridiculous with all the non-targeting removal we had, and to be fair, it was a little overpowered. So I could see Stormforth being at one. It's really not that big of a problem. You could only tribute summon one monster on your opponent's turn really anyway, and then you just, you know, anything you don't tribute summon, you just pop with Karaz. So there really is no problem. Stormforth at one is fine. Just recycle it with Edia and you have as many Stormforths as you need for as many turns as you need. And then for the last of my Monarch spells, I play one Pantheism because it does everything in this deck. It allows you to cycle two cards out of your hand into the graveyard and then you draw two. So you go metaphorically plus zero, but you get to dig deeper into your deck. And then on top of that, you can banish it to go plus one on top of that. Absolutely ridiculous. I understand completely why this card was hit to one and I expect it to be banned pretty soon, maybe into Lynx format because this deck is gonna fucking destroy. And then for the non-Monarch spells that I play, I play one foolish burial with belongings. I've been waiting for this card to come out to pump up my monarchs. Basically, you just send any spell or trap you want to the graveyard. You send Pantheism, you get to search for free. You don't lose hand advantage by activating this card. And then you get a banished Pantheism, which is easy as fuck to get back with Edia. You can get Edia back by foolish burialing Edia to the graveyard. Or you can send Erebus to the graveyard to recycle whatever monarch is in your graveyard back to your hand. These two cards let the deck go absolutely nuts, and it just makes it that much more consistent. You can run this at more than one. You can run it at three for now until it gets hit. But for now, I like to run it at one, two was too cloggy and three was ridiculously bricky so one of this and one of this this maybe bump up if you know it ever comes up off the you know forbidden limited list but for now one and one of each is perfectly fine i then play one one for one because it allows you to get to your edia it allows you to get two tribute summons off of the turn you activate it because you don't waste your normal bringing out the edia it allows you to do a lot of shit if you open up one for one on your first turn you're pretty much guaranteed to be broken as long as you can get at least one tribute summon off 
Next up, I play one Rota, just in case you don't happen to draw into your Edia or any baby monarch. This card at least lets you live. That's why I like it. I mean, this card used to be at three in fucking Satella format, which was crazy because it just added a ton of consistency, but this at one is perfectly fine. And then for my last spice tech, I play one tribute burial. This card is amazing in this deck. It allows you to tribute summon a monster that would require two tributes by banishing one card in your graveyard and one card in your opponents. So if you banish your opponent's Rat Pierre and bring out an Erebus and then non-targeting shuffle back whatever problem cards are on the field, you pretty much win the game because Zodiac can't function with fucking two rats. They really can't go off. I mean, once Leica comes out in the next set, maybe there'll be a little bit more of a threat, but either way, banishing any problem card in the graveyard is amazing and you get a free tribute summon pretty much on top of that anyway. And lastly, the two traps that I play, R2 Prime Monarch. I took out the D barriers because it actually hurts the deck a lot. You rely more on Vanity's Fiend. D barrier was only if I bricked, but I felt like by having D barrier in the deck, it actually caused me to brick more. Yeah, I could stall a turn, but if I don't draw the card I need, I'm kind of fucked. So I'd rather not run D barrier at all because all it does is stall my inevitable loss rather than help me win more. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. It just shows me that you guys actually enjoy this type of video. And if you really liked it, don't forget to click subscribe because it's free, it's fun, and I'll see you guys in the next one.